Well, hello everyone. I'm Chris. I'm Dana. Hi, this is Chen Guang. <laughs> and we want to welcome you to our very first episode of our podcast, Heard It Through the Grapevine, where we want to encourage uh, you and your faith and knowledge of God by giving you biblical and theological clarity to your questions about faith and life. And so we wanted to thank all of you um, who have submitted your questions. Dennis and I have read through all of them, and we're going to do our best to answer all of them. But there's a lot, and we're going through each one. And, and like I said, we'll do everything we can to answer them. Uh, we also hope that you continue, uh, if you haven't already, submitting questions. Uh, the link will be in the description. And so please keep them coming, and we'd love to hear how we best can serve all of you uh, during this time. Uh, with this podcast. And so with that, uh, as you can tell, we have a, a guest for our first episode, and that is Pastor Tsung Guang joining us. <laughs> um, just to give you a, a little um, a bio of, of um, Pastor uh, Tsung Guang, uh, Pastor Guang and his wife, Julie, have been blessed uh, with two children, Andrew, who's currently in New York, working as a financial analyst, and Anna, who is in seventh grade. Uh, he just finished in December 2019 his PhD in uh, Old Testament at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. So congratulations on, on finishing Thank that. You. Um, and he really has a, a heart and passion for teaching and pastoring among um, Chinese people and seeing them grow in faith. Um, and so uh, we really, once again, want to thank you, uh, Pastor Bong, for joining us and helping us launch our first episode of Heard It Through the Grapevine. And so thank you. Okay. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> as you guys know, we're uh, currently, uh, there's a, a season of COVID-19 and we're sheltering in place. Uh, it's an unprecedented time. And that's one of the motivations for why we're doing this podcast. But um, just just out of curiosity, what, <laughs> we're all pastors. What have you guys been doing <laughs> during shelter in place? <laughs> um, well, I Dennis, know from you want to go family, first? Yeah. We, yeah, we started watching Star Wars. So we just started going through all the different episodes. We've already gone through five and there's some pretty adverse effects. We've been having a lot of lightsaber fights at home. My son, Austin, he's three and a half. He went from from uh, being a huge Cars fan. And, and that's what happened, right? Everybody saw him as a Cars fan before he left. And now he's just like huge Star Wars fan. He still likes Cars, but he, he's really into Star Wars. So uh, that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but other than that, we've just been at home, just hanging out. The weather's beautiful, but we don't go outside. <laughs> okay, great. Um, uh, it's funny right now, uh, because after the gender difference, Anna prefers Japanese animes, uh, <laughs> but I tried to convince yes. her to watch uh, a lot of rings together with me, you know, <laughs> one by one. So yeah, it's a little bit debating right now. <laughs> but anyways, we have a lot of fun together. I mean, uh, especially during this period of time, we uh, yeah. we have a yard because we're living in a small community. It's kind of like a condominium. There is a garden, uh, I mean, uh, fence around us. So I prefer go outside every day with her, try to <laughs> dig out things, you know, normally we will neglect, such as snails, how many snail friends we can count every day <laughs> and just visit. Uh, and also the, uh, the birds, I mean, like we, we, have, a, we have a nest in the uh, laundry room, I mean, downstairs, and uh, there are two chicks there. So we just oh, wow. stop by every day and say hello to them. I mean, <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot of fun right now. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Awesome. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, you know, I, I have a 10-month-old, um, soon to be 11-month-old. And so she's crawling all over the place. She, she's starting to climb up on things. And so we have to be a little more vigilant. Um, but it's a lot more fun. Uh, she laughs a lot. And she babbles a lot and so it's been really interesting especially for um to my my wife and i kind of navigating all this because we both work from home right and so i do a lot of one-on-ones with college students and preparing for friday night uh bible studies and whatnot and uh to my is actually teaching preschool online using zoom to two and three year olds it's amazing um but then we have hannah running around so we're going back and forth who takes care of hannah but it's it's just been a lot of fun and we actually do go outside to the park we kind of we have a park nearby and we go out probably two to three times a day just to get oh, out nice. and do oh, something wow. and so it's just been a lot of fun now. i know she's really like great. i feel like i haven't seen her in like a a month and yeah. right now she has more hair yeah yeah, yeah. she looks yep. like tamai 
Yes, yeah, she does. Baby, baby grows fast. Yes. <laughs> That's for sure. And she loves eating. She loves eating. She she started just eating big chicken bed. drumsticks, and she can just rip nice. it off. And so it's been good. Nice. Yeah, it's been really good. Well, awesome. Well, our 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 first question for our first episode that we're going to be tackling. Uh, really talks about uh, kind of uh, essential sacraments or a, a one of the markers of the church, um, specifically baptism and communion. But we're going to be focusing more on communion this time around. And this question comes from a member of Vinewood, and it goes like this. Uh, if it is true that a church is not a church, if it doesn't perform the sacraments of communion and baptism, what does this mean for us today, especially during COVID-19 and shelter in place, uh, when we aren't able to? Uh, should we try to continue these practices, and can we con can we even continue them? And what is CFC's stance on it? Now, I, I love this question. I thought this was a great question uh, when I first heard it and, and processing through it. I mean, actually, this question is loaded. There's a lot of layers to it. But what is the church, uh, markers of the church, as well as CFC stance, right? And it's amazing. Uh, it's unique, actually, to our church and many probably other um kind of Chinese or Asian churches where you have an English congregation and, a, and another language congregation together and under one roof and one body. How do we navigate all that? And so, um, yeah, I, I love this question. I think all of us do. And so uh, really, I want to um, focus mainly on, I mean, there's different ways we can approach this, um, uh, this question. Uh, and so I guess I just leave it up to you, Dennis. Uh, you want to start us off with what do you want to yeah how do you want to answer that <laughs> that's that, that definitely a lot to it like you said it's a very nuanced question very specific question i i love this question because first this member is thinking theologically which i think is great and thinking about well, what the church is so uh, you know props for uh, trying to really build up their eschatology and, uh, and or sorry, not eschatology, ecclesiology and understanding what, <laughs> yeah, eschatology, whole nother thing. Uh, that's a whole nother podcast, but thinking uh, about his or her ecclesiology and wanting to know that. And so uh, what I want to do is talk about the things we all agree. And so one, obviously we are one church. Vinewood is the English congregation of CFC Berkeley. And so we do share a lot of common uh, heritage, and we, we share the same theological understanding, and we abide by the same uh, statement of faith. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I do want to say, and you know, Sun Guang, feel free to uh, interject, the things that we all agree. So we definitely agree definitely, that, yeah. the uh, that, that uh, we, you know, the local church is, is, is important. We want uh, membership and people to be invested, involved, and the local church is expressed by two markers, right? The correct preaching of the word of God yeah. and the practice of the ordinance or, or the sacraments, um, the Lord's Supper and baptism. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, for the English, English congregation, Chinese congregation, the whole church, we would all say, yeah, this is true. Yeah. We agree with it and it's important. And so, yeah, do you have anything to add to 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 that, Sun Guang, uh, as our guest? Um, yeah, I wholeheartedly agree with Pastor Dennis said, just said. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's important at the local church we keep the purity of gospel preaching, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, ministering of the uh, two sacraments, which is, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, in our Bible, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so there's definitely, we're, we definitely do not disagree on on the, the theological aspects. And mm -hmm. I think at this point, the um, we, let's just kind of lay our cards on the table. Yep. And so for those who might not know, the English congregation, we have decided to postpone the Lord's Supper until we mm -hmm. gather again physically. <laughs> and the Chinese congregation uh, feels led to uh, celebrate communion or the Lord's Supper in a virtual format. So mm -hmm. asking the members of the Chinese congregation to prepare the elements at home and for them to take it together. Yeah. And so right now, I think why we wanted uh, Pastor Sun Guang to come on this podcast is one, so so our listeners or viewers, however you are uh, you know, taking in this information, would see that first, there, there are different perspectives in our church and how to practice it and we've had lots of really good discussion amongst the elders of our church mm -hmm, and yeah. I think that everyone has a good understanding of where everybody falls and no one is at a 
uh, no one's at a place where they feel like this is a, a theological tension that needs to be separated. You know, we need, we need to separate or anything like that. So yeah. mm -hmm. I think everybody understands we are going for best practice yeah. and we are uh, disagreeing uh, respectfully on the method of this, but no one is at a point saying you're being sinful or you're, you're, mm. you are being rebellious to scripture. Yeah. So I think we just kind of want to put that out that mm. everyone's like, yeah, we get where you're coming from. We also mm. understand there's some mm -hmm. cultural nuances mm -hmm. and, and this is definitely a very weird time. We, no one is, <laughs> well, may, may not know him, but definitely in our generation and even a couple generations past, mm -hmm. we didn't ever have to deal with this or we never had to deal with how to do church on the internet or anything, anything like that. Mm -hmm. right? The last time that there was this type of social distancing or separation is the 1918 uh, uh, Spanish flu pandemic yeah. where churches had to stay at home, but they didn't have the internet. Uh, they didn't have Zoom. So yeah. this is definitely a very church different time. <laughs> yeah, church was just like, we're not meeting. And it's like, yeah. all right, well, what can you do? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so I think we just want to all agree, like, hey, we are going for best practice and we understand that uh, everyone is really, no one's, no one's denying some of the basics of, of yeah. scripture at this point. Yeah, I, I wanted to chime in, you know, I think, I think yep. across the board in, in kind of studying this question and this topic, churches are doing this differently all over the world, <laughs> yep. you know, um, and, and really, I think that speaks on one hand, people are like, well, then something must be off, right? And, and I think the reality is, like you said, Dennis, this is unprecedented time. We, we would have never had to ask this question if it wasn't for shelter in place and COVID-19. Yeah. You know, I would imagine in, uh, like you said, in 1918 during the Spanish flu, man, there, there was no church corporate gathering of communion. It may have happened within the home, maybe, right? <laughs> Individually where the husband was, was presiding over the elements, but, yeah. we, you know, yeah. definitely not in corporate setting, right? That's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so now with, with technology and the ability um, to potentially yeah. do this online, um, man, people, you know, maybe some people are doing it without even thinking, which is okay. Um, but I really think yeah. that this is a great question because we really should think about it thoroughly, right? Um, and, and flesh these things yeah. out. Yeah. And so with that, um, really, Sun Guang, I, I wanted to, to ask you, um, what okay. are some of your concerns about not taking the Lord's Supper during this time of okay. shelter in place? Because like we said, uh, the Chinese congregation yeah. is taking the Lord's Supper. And, and I know you have a unique perspective yeah. and, and cultural kind of background that might, may help support, and especially the Chinese congregation may help uh, yeah. all of us understand the context of why yeah. you've chosen to, to participate in, in the yeah, Lord's yeah, Supper yeah, during yeah. this time. Sure. Um, I think uh, I can give two reasons um, about this uh, current decision, we are going to continue doing this. First is about the, uh, a little bit about the theological meaning of the uh, Lost Supper. Uh, as Pastor Dennis said, I would really respect the, um, the variety within the unity because we are unified on pretty much everything. I think this currently what I'm talking about right now is only about the different way to to do the best mm -hmm. ministry you know uh, within a certain congregation setting um first of all about the theological meaning to me my thinking about last supper is not only memorial to remember what jesus did for us and also expect for the future his coming also it means to me it means we are spiritually fed by Jesus Christ, in a sense. So because of that, that's why I think um, uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians uh, 10 and 11, when Paul talks about, about that, they take it seriously. And even like, you know, um, I think it's um, Don Carson, when he comment on John the sixth, he will say, uh, though the uh, Lost Supper or anything, you know, appear there, nothing appears there. However, if you want me to say what's the best uh, explanation of Lost Supper, go to John 6. Mm. Given that, I will say, if we are spiritually feed on this, we are united to Christ, to me, it's indispensable for our spiritual growth. Mm. I think also that's why, on the other hand, we are talking about 
uh, excommunication as a church discipline, right? So my concern from that perspective is that, does it mean that we have, because of the current situation, we have to certain kind of excommunicate ourselves mm -hmm. from it to a point like, you know, to, then it depends, then it goes back to question the frequency of Lost Supper, right? Sure. Some church will take that, oh, okay, what's the big deal? Just a couple of months, right? But if, if my understanding about the Lost Supper as the spiritual feeding of us, so I, I feel myself don't get to that point like should communicate everybody from it. Uh, on the other hand, I definitely agree the stance, you know, I did a little research on the... Uh, as well, I know there's, there's a lot, as a, particularly at this specific moment, at the stance of repentance, let's see that, as regret for the whole country, we put a stance, let's see, we excommunicate ourselves for a certain amount of time. I agree on that. You see what I mean? I, I can sure. feel the heart. I, I, I will say amen on this. Sure. But uh, then I think the question boils down how long? You see what I mean? Yeah. How long? Yeah. Then uh, I think. Given that, I, I don't think there is a big difference between what uh, one what is doing and the, uh, the Mandarin congregation is doing. Mm, sure. And uh, this is one reason, theological reflection on this. So I'll just give the reason. Another side, as maybe from my background as the grown up in the underground church. Mm. So by then, actually, I get baptized in a very private place. Mm. The uh, minister of church find a place which is you know, it's relatively safe. And uh, we can get a water jar there, a big water, you know, jar there. And I get immersed in, into the water jar. And with wow. several, I mean, yeah, with several brothers, sisters, you know, as the uh, witness. Mm. Depends. Still, I will say depends on the uh, setting. And also, I mean, uh, for the uh, communion, because underground church, you cannot, by then, you cannot get a lot of congregation like, you know, you can't get a uh, public like gathering yeah. over a certain number of people. And uh, let's say CFC Berkeley, you, you know, you get a choir, right? You get a worship team, right? Like Chris, you did a wonderful job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we can't have this, yeah. right? You will disturb sure. the um, neighbor, the neighbor will report, report to the, um, uh, the government that, that you get in trouble. Because mm. of this, then you know, we can't do everything quietly. Sure. Uh, Having said that, I still can recognize there is a difference between what we practiced before in the underground church and currently the virtual way. I will say, I definitely realize there is a lacking of, I mean, uh, body appearance with my brothers and sisters. I think if I reflect on that side, I will say because of the mourning, I mean, we are lament um, because of this or sin, and uh, we deserve the punishment. If you, from that side, we want repent, you know, uh, put ashes on my head, uh, turn my clothes on that sense. So I just try to exclude myself away from the, the table. You, you see what I mean? I can feel the heart. I, I will say, I mean, I will say that. I think that then the question is how long? Yeah. So that's why I think maybe uh, at the beginning, I mean, uh, we might not put enough theological thoughts, reflection on this. Mm -hmm. I think with Dennis and Chris, you put, put that up. I thought about this. I said, yeah, I mean, if there, we view from that perspective, yeah, we say, uh, we throw from period of time, let's say if uh, God's mercy, we get, you know, this you know, shelter in place, order lift up, yeah. uh, lift up like next month or end of next month as currently, I mean, uh, the policy. So yeah. we, Everybody get together, have a celebration. Yeah, yeah, I will see. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's fine with me. So that's that's I think that's the nuance in, inside of mm, this. So that's sure. why. Uh, uh, currently, I will speak for the um, yeah from Chinese side. I think yeah. might not be the uh, the might not be the uh, consensus of the all the theological stance from the, uh, China, the elders sure. i mean i'm mean, on the chinese conversation yeah. but definitely i think i i can put up put up put up a front everything like this that's yeah. that's currently my theological reflection on this thank you
Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and for you, Dennis, I mean, I know you and I talked a lot about this as well. And, and we thank you, Tsung Kwong. We, we, that was actually very, uh, I love those two points. <laughs> very, uh, it helped me see, see a better clarity to, to kind of why uh, uh, the Chinese congregation has decided to participate in communion. Um, but for, for you, Dennis, um, uh, specifically for Vinewood, what are your concerns about taking the Lord's Supper during this time? Um, what, why have we decided to refrain? I know Tsung Kwong kind of mentioned it already, but um, you might have some mm -hmm. more to add to that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, one, I really appreciate the thoughtfulness and also understanding the, the viewpoints and also the cultural background. I've never grown up or attended an underground church. I would have no idea what that experience would be like in terms of having to find a secure location to get baptized or anything like that. And I really appreciate the high view of, uh, of the Lord's Supper um, from um, Tsung Guang because we, we, it's good for us to continue to be reminded that communion is something that is very important and uh, beneficial for one's spiritual, spiritual life. And so I think all those things are really good points. Uh, there are a few concerns. I think in general, uh, first, uh, we, we all understand that there is an expiration date to all of this. There will be a day that we will all gather again physically. So it's not like English congregation is uh, ceasing to take the Lord's Supper indefinitely, nor is it that the Chinese congregation will just now do the Lord's Supper via virtually indefinitely either so we, we we all understand that eventually whether it's hopefully next month or next year or whatever it may be we will all return and be able to participate uh, with the physical gathering of the saints uh, in this local church so I think with that regard we all understand like hey we're just trying to figure out how to do church the best right now for the next month or two or however long it may be uh, some of the concerns that, that I know I have when uh, thinking through this is I have uh, about three concerns. And, and my first one is that, uh, one, there's, there's no, no elders there to uh, deliver the elements or specifically uh, fence the table in terms of that, where when we are inviting um, those to come and partake in the Lord's Supper, uh, there isn't, uh, there aren't any elders or leaders of the church that would fence the table properly in that regard. And so I think that uh, whether, I'm not saying there's nobody in our church at this current point in time that is under uh, church, church discipline. So this is now merely a theological, you know, theoretical idea. There is nobody that we can fence, the, uh, fence it at this time. I, I think second one is when we start make when it's taken virtually, I do fear that there is this individualization of the event versus a communal event. Right now, mm. everyone is watching into a video on their computer or on their TV, and it's a very one-way thing. And I, I think we can even talk about, like, is the online church even a real true worship service? And I know somebody asked that question. We do want to talk about that as well, we won't talk about that in this podcast because that's like a whole other thing. Yeah. But to touch upon it a little bit, just a little bit, I think that there is a difference between watching watching church on a screen or like a quote unquote church on a screen versus actually being together in the, uh, you know, the body of saints coming together, the assembly yeah. coming sure. together. Yeah. And so when we have that, it, it, it kind of just continues to individualize the event. And I think that in general, even when we were gathered together, um, it, it, it was easy for us to individualize it, right? To consider our own sins, consider ourselves and, and um, make it about us versus seeing that it is uh, the church come together. It's the many, the church, the local church, coming as one, right? Partake, partaking in a symbolized one, one bread, which is uh, symbolizing as the body of Christ or the, cup, the one cup uh, Christ's blood shed. And so I do think that when we make it a virtual event, it does, it does individualize that. And, and just to even kind of, it's like a 2.5 uh, or third point, it is the virtual is not the same as the physical. Um, there, there is not the same. And we, we want to make sure we keep 
keep a clear distinction between the virtual gathering and the physical gathering. And we don't want to bleed those two spaces together. And and this is a this is a very unprecedented time. Uh, we I believe that we are providentially hindered from taking it, and so we just wait until we can take it again. And this is a time of suffering, and with all suffering comes loss. There is a loss, and um, so I feel like the goal that could be really uh, beneficial for the church right now is to feel that loss, to feel and understand that there is a loss. We are not stopping the Lord's Supper. We are simply postponing it until it is um, appropriate for us to gather together again to do that. And we, this is the same with baptism. We have postponed our baptism service because mm -hmm. we are going to wait until we can gather again to, to do that. And so I think the good news for all of us is that we are not making a long-term decision. This is ultimately going to be a short-term decision, whether it's measured in months or years, probably, hopefully, Lord willing, months, uh, <laughs> months or yes. weeks, but no, yes. Lord willing. Uh, but we know that this will, there will be an end to this. And yeah. so, and I really appreciate it, like what Sung Wong said, like we, we want to try to really serve our congregation. I know the elders are doing, are, are, are communicating, which I actually think it's a, it's a good thing as well. Even though I said that we should feel the suffering, we should feel the loss. Uh, the Chinese congregation is trying to normalize church as much as possible. And I think in some sense, that's just trying to keep a good rhythm and pattern, pattern even though we can't have the physical gathering. And uh, I think that there's still some, wisdom to that and uh sh there's there's good shepherding to that as well and i think i i really appreciate that because uh, i can sense that they are trying to care for their flock in a very uh you know in a deep and intimate and and, and real way and so in one sense we do want to continue to normalize this that we meet at the same time we sing songs we preach the word but at this on on the flip side we also want to continue to remind our congregation that this is not church this is not how it's supposed to be and we we are yearning for the day for us to be able to come back together and and even in a sense that same type of feeling should uh, remind us that as we look at life itself it is not supposed to be this way and we are yearning for the return of christ yes. and so uh, I think that's kind of where the, the English congregation is is coming from and the different nuance in that regard. Yeah, definitely. Thank you guys for answering. We're, we're getting close uh, or almost out of time. Um, but I, I really like both of your points um, in regards to answering this, this question in regards to communion and, and the sacraments in the church. And so thank you so much for your time. I, I just want to point out something that I took uh, from you, Dennis, um, is that uh, we, we may not, at least for Vinewood, we we're hoping it's months, but if this lasts longer, we might reevaluate this, right? And, and we don't even know what shelter in place might look like for both Chinese and, and English congregation. Even if it's lifted, the elder board is still processing. How do we slowly integrate people yeah. back into yeah. the church? Maybe it's you gather 10 people in a home with yeah. an elder there and we can provide the elements there. And then maybe Vinewood would start changing things up, right? We'll, we'll preside over communion, but you're at a localized yeah. area where it's someone that we know can, can, can kind of help prepare the elements and we'll lead it. You know, we don't know, right? With technology, I think it's a huge blessing to have. Um, and, uh, but for now, I think the principles, at least for Vinewood anyway, is, is we want to, um, uh, protect the table and, and ensure that those who do participate are true believers in Jesus Christ and not under church discipline, but also that, uh, that like Dennis said, that, that feeling of longing, right, and, and wanting to come back together again and, and help them through that process. And so, again, I want to thank you all for, uh, for joining us. Thank you, Pastor Chung Guang, uh, for joining us yeah, and helping welcome. us. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I want to thank all of you, the yeah, listeners. May I just, oh, may yeah, I go ahead. In yeah. For one, yeah, one uh, last yeah, sentence. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think still I'm thinking it's a great uh, reflection from the one side of this, uh, particularly uh, Pastor Daniel's mentioned about that. I think it's also a good reminder for the uh, Chinese congregation because on, the coming, on this coming Sunday, we're going to have a lost supper. Mm. So, and I'm going to preside it. 
So because of this, I think it reminds me how to see it, like in front of screen, uh, like, you know, uh, what they should examine themselves and uh, what, what kind of people could take it or not, could not take it. And also, I think we, sh I also need to mention, this is a, not a normal situation. This reminds us, even you can take it from home, but please be, remind, please re be reminded, we are going to get together and uh, this is, keep on reminding us, this mm -hmm. is not a, uh, not a normal situation. It, it's, yeah. I think it's, it's good time for us as the uh, Chinese congregation to reflect on this. What do we lost? What do we lost? What, what we are missing? What are we are learning for? So in that sense, I think it's great. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, for, yeah. And there's of plenty of, there's plenty of uh, uh, gospel preaching, Christ-centered churches are doing this differently. It's not just yeah. our church and there's been a lot of uh, different viewpoints. And so I Absolutely. think this is an open-handed issue that we're yep. just trying to navigate around and uh, we don't want to kind of, we don't want to use this as a tight-fisted issue and, and yeah. just be able to give uh, grace and understanding to different perspectives. And hopefully our listeners have been able to be encouraged and benefit yeah. from thinking carefully through this. Yeah. 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 So as Dennis said, we want to thank all of you, the listeners for, for supporting uh, Dennis and myself in this kind of experiment of a podcast, hoping that it'll encourage all of you. Um, we hope you keep submitting your questions to us. Like I said, the link will be in the description. Um, and please join us next week as we answer another one of your questions about faith and life. And so thank you so much, uh, Pastor Guang and Dennis, um, for your time. And uh, yeah, see everyone later. Bye. Bye.